I'm concerned about black leg because since 2010, I've read that uh, black leg problem has been increasing. Black leg through the late 90s all the way early 2000s has really been a non-issue for producers. But it's only in the last decade now that we're starting to see black leg creep up and largely that's due to the pathogen has continued to evolve, to change. It's become an extremely diverse population and is able to overcome a lot of the resistance genes that we're using nowadays. Black leg is, I consider it a classic invasive organism. It's a terrible plant disease. It can lead to devastating losses if it's really unchecked or uncontrolled in any sort of way. So it's a serious thing. So typically we found for each unit increase in disease severity, we get about a 17% decline in yield. It's a disease that started the infection mostly on the cotyledons that go into the stem, and you have kind of a typical the basal canker kind of a damage. Yeah. And it stays in the soil because it's a stubble bone and uh, proliferates into new inoculum in the new season. There's two pathogens that, that cause black, like there's Leptospheria vaglobosa and Leptospheria maculans, and this is the one that really causes the yield loss, causes the stem canker. It has been around, from our best estimates, around 1975. And the first canola variety was developed in from rapeseed in 1974, so it's pretty early in, in the whole canola growth in the industry, but it was really through the 80s that we saw black leg really begin to take off because we did not have any real resistance uh, to, to black leg. And the black leg really peaked probably right around the early 1990s and because that was when we started developing black leg resistance. And we had really good resistance genes that finally came about mid 90s and black leg through the late 90s all the way early 2000s has really been a non-issue for producers kind of became almost like a cosmetic disease. But it's only in the last decade now that we're starting to see black leg uh, creep up, and largely that's due to the pathogen has continued to evolve, to change, has become an extremely diverse population, and is able to overcome a lot of the resistance genes that we're using nowadays. Black leg major gene resistance has been one method used to battle the pathogen within Canadian canola varieties. It is crucial to understand how major genes work, to steward resistance properly. Resistance comes about with a resistance gene in a variety, such as this particular variety, where the, what we call a hypersensitive reaction. This has got the same amount of inoculum that this got. The difference is this particular leaf had a resistance gene, and it interacted with the avirulent gene of the same type. So for example, let's say this was carrying RLM1 gene. It has to interact with AVRLM1 gene to give hypersensitive reaction. What it means is the pathogen has not been able to cause more infection. There has been programmed cell death right around and the pathogen has not been able to move any further. That interaction comes only when a resistance gene meets or interacts with the avirulent gene. It's like a lock and key mechanism. The key has to fit exactly to the right lock, otherwise you cannot open. So once that fit is there, you get that resistance. That same cultivar can be deceased like this because that lock and key mechanism was not there. And that comes about because there's no avirulent allele, instead there's a virulent allele. That virulent allele, because it is virulent, has no lock and key mechanism. So the pathogen is now capable of causing disease. The same variety can react in different ways to different uh, pathogen isolates. Minor gene, or quantitative resistance, is another option being incorporated into Canadian canola varieties. There's also what's called quantitative or adult plant resistance, and that is controlled not by one single gene or, or genes. Uh, it is controlled by a, a number of really small genes that kind of work in a synergistic or in an additive type of uh, fashion. So these quantitative resistance genes, uh, the more that you have of them, the, the better that the resistance 
is, but it's, it's not a complete type of resistance. Like the plant still gets infected. What these genes do, they kind of work at slowing the development of the disease. Those quantitative resistance genes actually work really well uh, the more that you have at, at providing a really good uh, backup. It's very durable. So because there's a lot of genes, the, the fungus, the pathogen, the hard time overcoming all of those. Uh, in terms of a diversity, and we do have a, a bit of higher diversity in the pathogen population in terms of virulence, and we have a slightly narrower uh, diversity in the resistance gene pool at this time. So the unfortunate thing about the fantastic success we had with the genetic resistance that we introduced in the 1990s was that it was conferred by one gene. And as effective as it was, we basically applied the selection pressure for the pathogen to overcome that, that single gene. And we had deployed that one gene so widely across the prairies that a Maryland gene basically disappeared from Canadian populations and we started to see uh, a, a really rapid increase in the amount of uh, disease both uh, in individual fields, uh, the total number of fields, and the severity of the infection in each field as well. We have seen more black leg and also black leg on resistant varieties. Incidence of black leg is on the rise, but so far the severity is still low. Producers can now estimate their yield loss caused from black leg by completing a black leg disease survey and running their results through the yield loss model. We would rate the seasons on plants on a, on a scale of 0 to 5 based on, on the severity of, of black leg symptoms using established scales and then measure yields from there. And we found was that for, for every unit increase in the sea severity, we saw a 17.2% decline in yield. Producers have several tools to manage resistance and the focus should be directed towards scouting, crop rotation and growing resistant rated varieties. We have to start being a lot more cognizant of what it's there, crop scouting, uh, going in and maybe cutting off to samples in the fall, making sure that uh, you don't have any, and if you do, we're going to have to start worrying about our crop rotations to a much greater extent. There's a reason we've been recommending for years now a one in four rotation. And the reason for that is that little piece of wood left over after a canola plant dies is where the black leg fungus overwinters and you want that thing to decompose. That robs the fungus of its home and the population goes down. If you do a canola crop after canola crop or after a short interval, that stuff sticks around and you build up that population. Black leg resistance identification will still incorporate the old field testing rating of RMR, but now seed developers have the option to add resistance gene labels to the field testing rating. Identifying the resistance gene will allow producers to pick varieties with a different major gene profile. If producers are dealing with a severe black leg infection, additional management tools need to be considered, such as an early season fungicide application or using different black leg resistance genes. Yeah, the, the rotation piece is really important because what we do know is that if you use one resistance gene in a field and there's a pathogen population, uh, the individuals that are capable of, of overcoming that resistance or, or avoiding that resistance are the ones that will be successful at producing spores in the next time. So if you go back to that field and use that same type of resistance again, now you have a much bigger population that will be able to overcome that resistance. So that's why it's better to switch to a new type of resistance gene and then that pathogen population is not adapted for that new gene. Uh, adjust the genes that they throw out the population. So imagine you have a field that has a black leg population in it and it's able to attack the canola cultivars that you have been using it because it's become adapted to those genes. If you throw a different set of genes into that, into that field, that population is not adapted to, to attacking that and the, the disease uh, losses and the amount of disease will go down. Remember, the first step is scouting your field and being able to properly identify and measure levels of black leg within it. By using an integrated pest management approach to black leg in Canada, we will be able to minimize the threats posed to the Canadian canola industry well into the future. For more information, visit blackleg.ca.